I want you to think for a second again about a conversation you've had with your mother. You'd pick up the phone, and after just one or two words, your mother would interrupt you and say, hey, what's going on? You don't sound so well. Sounds like you're too tired, or you didn't get much sleep, or you're under a lot of stress, or a little bit depressed. The interesting, yet sometimes annoying fact is that your mother would be right in eight out of 10 of the times. It almost looks like we can't hide anything from our mothers. Our body is producing all kinds of signals to tell us about its status, about how it's doing. And over the years, we've learned to sense some of these signals using all kinds of sensors. Some of these sensors are non-intrusive sensors. You could think of measuring blood pressure or body temperature with a thermometer or counting heartbeats. And some of these sensors are more intrusive, like taking blood tests or sugar tests. In recent years, there's been a lot of effort to develop new, non-invasive type of sensors. You could think of the Google Retina sensor that can basically measure glucose level or even give some indications about heart conditions. Or a very interesting sensor that can smell a human breath and can give indications about specific types of cancer. Let's look for a second at the characteristics of an ideal sensor. What would be the characteristics of such a holy grail sensor? We would like this to be a sensor that we can use remotely. We would like this to be a sensor that would be a non-intrusive sensor, potentially even a touchless, so you won't have to touch the patient in order to get a measurement. We would also love for this to give specific indications, the not generic ones. And ideally, if this sensor would be able to measure a health condition over time, and not just give specific ones, but can indicate if a condition is improving or deteriorating, this would be ideal. So what about voice? Can voice be such a sensor? Can we use voice as a biomarker for specific health conditions? Well, you could definitely think of us listening to a voice and getting indications about cold or sore throat or even levels of energy. We could also think about people with mental health conditions or brain disorders like you know, PTSD or depression or dementia. In this case, we can hear just by using the human ear that something is wrong. But in most cases, we wouldn't be able to tell using a regular human ear if the difference between, let's say, dementia and PTSD. We would like, however, the vocal biomarker software to be able to make such a distinction. But now comes an interesting question. Can the voice be a biomarker for conditions that we cannot detect with the human ear? And here the answer is yes. There is research going on around the world that shows that voice can be used to detect things like lungs problems, like COPD, but there are also indications that voice can be used in order to detect heart problems, heart conditions, like coronary artery disease, uh, which is a CAD or congestive heart failure. For example, Beyond Verbal has done a research with Mayo Clinic that shows that it is possible to differentiate between people with and without coronary artery disease just by analyzing their tone of voice and without knowing anything about the health indication of the patient ahead of time. But how can this be done? Well, you've all heard today and before about technologies like artificial intelligence or AI in short, or big data or uh, neural networks. In a way, what these technologies are trying to do is to imitate the way our brain works. So let's go back for a second to the mother example. So the way AI works is it uses really big data, thousands, tens of thousands, sometimes millions of data points, and trying to build an algorithm to make sense of all this wealth of information. 
And in a way, what our mothers are doing is pretty similar. They've been listening to us since we were kids for many, many years. So they know how we sound when we are okay and when we are sick. So these voice samples, the thousands of voice samples that they have are labeled. Now all they need to do is to use the same algorithm when they talk with us today and just differentiate between telling if we are okay or not. And at a high level, at an intuitive level, this is the way AI and big data is working in general and how vocal biomarkers work specifically. The researchers are using thousands and thousands of data points. Each of these voice recording is labeled of that of a healthy person or a sick person. And once the algorithm knows how to differentiate between a healthy person and a sick person, now it can take the same algorithm and generalize from a single person to the bigger population. So now we see that it's possible to use voice and AI in order to be able to tell if a patient has a specific condition or not, if a patient needs to go see a doctor right away or not, if the condition is deteriorating or improving, or if you think about also when there are all kinds of virus, viruses around as we have right now, this potentially can be used uh, as well. Another interesting question is, do we need any special recording devices? Turns out that this technology can use existing technologies, existing mobile networks, smartphone, smart home devices, personal assistants, even old mobile phones when we are using it to call service centers. So just imagine the huge implications such a technology can have on telemedicine and remote healthcare. Just think of all these rural areas where the nearest hospital could be hours away, maybe longer. Or think about these uh, patients that wouldn't like to go and see a doctor and stand in line and go and stand in uh, traffic jams just because they don't feel so well. Or the example of the viruses that, uh, that I gave. Or the other way around, think of a chronic patient that maybe their condition is deteriorating but they cannot tell whereas the software should be able to tell and give advance, uh, advance warning. So we see that it's possible to use the most advanced technologies, AI and big data, in order to understand what our body is projecting, vocal biomarkers and other signals, all in order to bring healthcare much closer to us. The last remark I want to leave you with is this. When I talk about vocal biomarkers in Western countries, this is a pretty novel approach for them. But when I talk about this here in Asia, it's actually not that novel. And the reason is Chinese and Indian doctors have been using these methods for centuries. When a patient would come to an old Chinese doctor or an old Indian doctor, they would listen very carefully to what their patients were saying, but they would listen not to what they say, but to how they say it, and use it as a diagnostic tool. So now, perhaps for the first time in history, we can use technology in order to imitate what these doctors have been doing for centuries. The last thing I want to tell you is make sure you always listen to your mothers, because mothers know best. Thank you.